Good to do. Oh, if only I could get coin from him. There's an angry hive dweller. Where's the tout? No, they're just harlots. I would much prefer to speak with a hout. A tout even. So many angry hive dwellers. My god. Harlot. Harlot. Angry hive dweller. Yeah, let's talk to him. I'm curious if they'll actually say anything. You see a man in old and tattered clothes. As you approach him, he makes a detour to avoid you and keeps walking. Greetings. The man ignores you and begins to walk faster, sir. He turns, glancing briefly to the right and left of you. As if looking to see if you have any friends with you, he draws a dagger. If this leave me be, or you'll be wearing this steel between your ribs. Calm down, I, had to, I just had some questions. He scoffs, I'm sure you do. And I have no answers for the likes of you. Piss off. Farewell then. Yeesh, dick. God. So what's this place? Is this the tattoo parlor? No, Tenement of Thugs. That's the tattoo parlor. Maybe the tattoo parlor's the... Uh... Merchant. I have no idea. At this point, I'm just willing to try anything. Oh. Fell. You see a dabbers, but something about it strikes you as odd. It has the same sh shock of white hair, the same greenish cast to its skin, the same pair of goat horns. Then you suddenly realize this one is walking on the ground, not floating. For some reason, that makes you uneasy. Okay, I have some questions for you. The dabbers waits. Who are you? The dabbers inclines his head slightly, and a lone symbol appears above his head. It's blurry at first, then resolves into a white oval with a black lightning bolt through it. For some reason, you know that Abbas has a name. Its name is Fel. I feel like I know you, Fel. Fel bows reverently, and a stream of symbols swirl about his head, rotating clock clockwise, then counterclockwise. You have to guess at some of the symbols, but you think he said something about this not being the first time you have come to this place. Do you know who I am? Another series of symbols materialize quickly and sharply into focus above Fel's head. These symbols are not as difficult as the others. You think he says he knows you, but he cannot say any more than that. Why not? For a moment, there is no response from Fel. Then a stream of... rebuses appear as if trickling out of Fel's mind. You think he's saying he's sorry, but he can't you can't translate the rest. You see, I had another question for you. What is this place? The slow train of symbols materialize around Fel's head. The symbols take several moments to resolve, starting with simple lines, then fleshing themselves out into breathtaking colors. You're guessing at some of the symbols... But you think he's an artist, Th and this is a tattoo parlor. Can I see what tattoos you have? Oh my god, I can. Ah, oh, I can sell- can I sell stuff? Wait, it's lot 20 of 20. Sell. Buy, sell. Oh, I can ident- can I identify? I'm confused. Wait, so if I- Mm, not entirely sure. Maybe I can't because he's only- he's like a very specific person. More questions. Feel like I know you, what lies beyond that curtain? Yeah, sure. A caravan train of symbols slowly materialize around Fell one by one. You think he is saying it's a gallery of some sort, a gallery of you. The next part is difficult to translate, but you think that Fell is saying he is sad for you. Sad? Why? Another caravan of symbols forms around Fell, this time forming a circle. He says something about you being marked and tormented. There's another section you cannot translate, and then the last portion seems to be something about you enduring pain. What do you mean? A long string of reviews... I still don't know if it's reviews or rebus. Whatever. Rebuses appear above Fell's head, then surround his arms like menacles. He seems to be saying he admires you for enduring losses. Go on. A long string of... Rebuses appear above Fell's head, then falls, covering him in, like a cloak. He seems to be saying these losses cover your life and your other lives. You're not certain what the other symbols surrounding this message mean, however. Uh, is there anything else you can tell me? A brief series of paper-thin rebuses appear in an orderly row next to Fell, then vanish into glowing moats. You think he just wants you not to sign anything during your next travels, or during your travels. Very well. Another series of rebuses appear, forming a spiral. They have the texture of a question about them. You think he just asked you if you feel whole? Um, I don't. In fact, ever since I woke up in the mortuary, I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like something's missing. Something inside. Fell nods, and a series of symbols materialize in a halo, halo around him. You think he's telling you to be strong, to keep faith. I'll try. Ah, na, 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 na. Oh yeah. Wait, you say you've met me before, Fel. Do you know how I died? 
Sol does not respond for a moment, and slowly menacingly, three symbols have materialized above his head. Each of them casting a long shadow, you think he's saying something about shadows. Shadows? The three symbols swirl about each other, each leaving a faint black misery, a misty trail about them. They take on a ragged edge, like teeth and talons and multiply. Three splits into three, then into three again, until the entire room seems covered by a swarm of shadows. He seems to be saying that you were killed by many shadows. Why? The shadow symbols swirl into one, then dissolve to be replaced with a simple symbol. Sel doesn't seem to know why. I see. Okay, so can you tell me something, or anything, about these tattoos on my body? Sel sorties your body for a moment, walking around you. He mirrors each symbol as he examines it, then returns to face you. From what you can make of his floating symbols, he's saying the tattoos are not his. I'll keep that in mind. Uh, never mind. Farewell. Yay! Well, we learned. Right. Wait, so what is this? He said this is like a gallery of me. Human skin has been stretched onto the wooden frame. The skin... Skins are covered with tattoos. Oh god. That's awfully grim. Jesus. Hmm. I'm still trying to find the other starved dog. Can't believe I've been doing a side quest for this long. <laughs> I mean, it's fun. I'm, like, exploring as well. But for the most part, it's trying to find the staffed dog is mostly what I'm doing. So what else is there? Da da. And you've got Kuatra's warehouse. All right. I mean, the, a warehouse sounds like it could be a shop. Collector, harlot, harlot, harlot. Holy shit. Angry hive dweller. Townsperson. I mean, I'm just looking for another person that might not be wandering around the place. <laughs> Hmm. Which was this place? Oh yeah, the smoldering corpse bar, that's right. And you just got the hive thugs. See the burning man! Ah, oh, Christ. More of them! God damn it. Go on. Yeah! <laughs> I don't even know what the Litany of Curses does, but I like it. Wait a minute. All right. It was actually this guy that got cursed. You see that? And dead. We got him. He got a critical hit of two. More commons. More coppers. Yeah, I need to find something. <laughs> I do. I need to find a, a merchant or something in order to be able to get rid of all my shit. There's so bloody much of it. How did he do fall damage? He didn't even ta attack me, are you kidding? Die. Did we get him? Ah, dude. Ooh, he dropped money. Yes. Gimme! Right, so that's the corpse bar. More of them! Fuck me! <laughs> I was not even under attack before. This is baloney. I need to be careful. Run away, run away. How the fuck are you so fast? Oh, now he's running away. Kidding? He's only badly injured. He's gonna end up leading me into more fights. Hey! Oh, nice, a rat charm. Perfect. Right, now I'm nearly dead. Again. How many times must this happen? I'm scared about doing this. Kind of. Okay, it's fine. Wait. Some more townspersons. That's what I don't get. Like, there's supposedly three of them, but. Just look natural. Casual. Hmm. I really hope we don't get attacked. Go in here. I'm really just hoping that I can go in here and this is a merchant. Small dwe This does not sound good. Not particularly. Hmm. Do I dare save? I mean, I do. Probably a bad idea. But whatever. I'm gone. It did. It said it was a warehouse. Wait. There we go. Guadra. Moving from box to box, this man seems to be 
totally immersed in counting boxes and scribbling results down on a piece of parchment. He looks annoyed, annoyed as you interrupt him. What is it now? Can't you see I'm busy taking inventory? Go bother someone else. I don't mean to interrupt. Farewell. Oh. Well. I tried. It sounded like it was a shop. <laughs> I'm so sad. I was wondering if there was anything I could actually take. It would appear not. Right, so the hunt for a merchant, um, continues, I suppose. <laughs> hmm. Ah, fuck off. Fuck off. No, go away. I'm not fighting you. That's so many as well. Jesus. That's another angry hive dweller. I'm also just curious as to where the hell the other dog dude is. Do they still attack if I go back? Oh, Jesus, they do. Nope. I am out of here. Done. Done. Hive thug, hive thug. Mm-hmm. So where else is there? Dustman Monument, the Mausoleum, Shalandra's Kip. Open Tomb, Angras House, blah blah blah. I don't really know where a merchant would be. We can go to the Gathering Dust Bar. Actually, wait. Talk to the post. Ooh, nice. This filthy looking corpse is in sad shape. Hmm. Wait, so in sad shape, its shoulders are slumped and one of its legs is broken, causing it to lean to one side. Stains cover it from head to toe. Judging from the smell and the texture, the stains run from rotten fruit to mud and bird droppings. To add to the indignity, graffiti has been carved into his body, and several notices have been nailed into its chest, back, and head. I thought I was in bad shape. Don't all those nails hurt? The corpse makes no response. Examine the corpse. So a number of the leaflets have been ruined by rain, but some of them are still legible. One tacked to his back is from something called the Office of Vermin and Disease Control. The one on his forehead looks like a bill of fare for a restaurant. One on his chest looks like an official notice. And another appears to be some sort of want ad. Examine the corpse. Despite the many stitches, the corpse's rotting skin is peeling in several places, revealing long stretches of muscle and bone. You'd guess that this zombie is frequently used as target practice. The fruit and mud stains aside, some of the tears, uh, tears, tears in the skin still have rocks and bits of glass lodged in them. One wicked looking cobblestone is still embedded in the side of its head. Oh, pry out the cobblestone. You grab a hold of the cobblestone and pull it out of the corpse's head, traces of brain matter and rotting flesh slowly drip from it. Looks like whatever was in his head turned to ooze long ago. Examine the corpse. Okay, examine the graffiti and notices. Uh, ignore the notices, examine the graffiti. Wait, look at the post for Office of Vermin and Disease Control. No, what did I do? Crap, I didn't want to do that. No, I didn't. The hell? That must be the stone. So examine the corpse, examine the graffiti. Fuck my life. Is that stone? Oh, it's a bandage. What if I use it? Yeah, I can't use that either. That sucks. Would have been nice. I mean, I can't use that. But actually, I can. Cobblestone. Nice. I can just put it on the ground. Then I can pick this up. Oh, I used it. Or did I? I think I may have just actually healed at the same time. I'm pressing all the wrong buttons. <laughs> Yay! I don't know why I clicked that. I have quick loot enabled. Right, examine the graffiti. Jesus. Look at the post. So, to those hive citizens wishing gainful employ with the most honourable and generous sigil government, inquire forthwith. Or forth, yeah, forthwith. The Office of Vermin and Disease Control to help stem plague of brain rats. Bounties paid, copper given for each rat tail brought. Tails must be genuine and from rat only, no cat, dog, or fiend tail accepted. Office several streets south and west of Mortuary Gate in Lower Hive. Ask for official inspector in charge, the respected Phineas T. Lott. Is that the 39th? No idea. Either way, examine the other ones. So we've examined that. The Bill of Fare. Someone has posted a Bill of Fare for the Gathering Dust Bar, but the Bill of Fare cannot be read, as the words Smoldering Corpse Bar have been scrawled in charcoal over the bill. Smoldering Corpse Bar? The zombie immediately jerks its arm, uh, left arm upwards and points far to the southeast. 
A moment later, that the arm falls back to its side with a thump. So that must be pointing as to where it is. Reminds me of a job I once had. He seems embarrassed. Well, I mean, without the arms. I wonder if this would work with the other notices. All right, yeah. So the official notice. Public notice by the order of the Judiciary Council, Council, and in accordance with the citizenry of Sigil, let it be known that defacing a registered servant of the dustman, either by graffiti, malicious attack, or by posting notices, will constitute felonious assault, or felonious assault, and the perpetrator will be answerable for the vandalism of said servant by the order of, of the Hall of Speakers. Examine the other notices, and then we have number six, the wanted. Wanted, able-bodied person willing to investigate a matter of the utmost importance of, to the dustman cause. Will offer suitable compensation upon successful completion of said task. Interested parties inquire with initiate Naroach. Is that Naroach? Or Naroach? Gathering dust bar. Gathering dust bar? Zombie immediately jerks its left arm upwards and points west to the building before you. Okay. So, I think that's it? Uh, oh yeah, ignore the notices. Examine the graffiti. The graffiti runs from obscenities about the dustman to slogans glorifying what appears to be local gangs. One piece of graffiti catches your eyes. Someone has carved the name Farod on the corpse's left arm, then slashed an X across it. Farod? My journal. Hey, more XP! The zombie immediately jerks its arm left, points far to the west, and downwards. A moment later, the arm falls back to its side with a thump. And thanks. I would say we got it. Oh yeah, what about this chick? I completely forgot about her. She she was actually constantly talking. Yeah, Anna. Pykoff. Did she just say fuck? Oh no, she Pykoff. You see a striking red-haired girl dressed in leather armor. Her right arm is covered with a series of interlocking plates that look as if they were taken from the skin of some creature. And a horned shoulder piece protects her left arm. Oddly enough, she has a tail that is flicking back and forth as you watch. Pykoff. The girl ignores you. Who are you? The girl sneers that makes an obscene gesture, then makes an obscene gesture with her tail. Pike off, you clueless sod. Hey, easy, I just had some questions. Aye, and what is it you want? I can't help but notice you have a tail. Do I now? The girl looks at her tail, so I do, and here I was thinking that it was a trick in me eye. My, aren't you a sharp cutter? She bares her teeth. Why don't you piss off to whatever hole you crawled out of and leave me be? Me nor me tail is for trade, Jake. Alright, I would just cure. It's just as well neither neither you nor your tail are for sale. You couldn't squeak out a living with them anyway. Uh, What are you on about, you blighter? Say it again. He said you couldn't make a living selling yourself. He said, and I disagree. He didn't say anything, but I'm still curious. Why do you have a tail? The girl's eyes narrow to slits. Are you daft? Can it be that you're dumber than stones, or mayhap you're the power of ignor ignorance? May the dabbers brick you over and make you a street. Look, she's a tiefling, chief. Oh! They got some demon's blood in them, and that makes them paranoid and defensive. Nice tail, though. Shame it's plastered on such an ugly body. Whoa, now. You better latch your bone box, you foul-mouthed murmur, for a split hit from your, your jaw, Jig. Jesus. Why don't you try and split my jaw, chit? All I'm trying, not all I'm hearing, is a lot of chatter from some hive trash. Throw a punch, I dare you, I'll bite your legs off. Enough. That's right, leash your murmur, Todd, and I'll bury him with his body. Jesus. Murmur, what are you talking about? Hi, murmur. What, the gulp between your ears so wide my words echo? Don't answer my question. What's a murmur? Murmurs are talking encyclopedia. That's me, chief. Got it. He glances at Mart, then you, then sneers. I guess I know which of you has the brains, eh? Yeah, yeah. Look, I had some other questions. Uh, I'm looking for someone named Farad. Do you know where I can find him? I am, mate. I might say... More if you sweeten the question, I. She clicks her tongue, then rubs two fingers together. Jink, jink, I. Okay, so jink, jink. She means money. Oh. She glances at Mark, then shrugs. What the skull said. Hard coin. Alright, how much? How much is it... To you to know, I. She studies you, then folds her arms. Come on, I ain't got all day, I haven't. How about ten? That enough? That lump of copper ain't enough. To what? Ah, to wet a fated's appetite. And we need more. If you want to make friends here, 
I thought she said turd. How about 20 then? Aye, alright then. If she pockets the money, it's gone so quickly you have no idea where it vanished to. Look for him in the alley spirewood from the mortuary. That's to the south and the west of the mortuary, aye. Oddly enough, south and west of the mortuary is an alley filled with heavily armed thugs. Know anything about that? Oh, I well, maybe you'd best be asking them where the old uh, stutter crutch is. Enough of your lies, tell me where Farad is, girl, or you'll soon be number you'll soon number amongst the city's dead. But that'll have nothing more to say to you, Burke. Get you better watch your tongue alerts coming off. Jesus. Pike off to wherever you came from then, farewell to you do. I've never seen something so ugly I've not. Jesus. She's skittish. Slow Sigil there is. So it is Sigil. What a weird name. Sigil makes way more sense. At least to me. <laughs> But I'm just an idiot. Oh, wait. There we go. I'm sorry, I just want to go into the bar. Chief, what are we doing in here? Let's say we just give this place the laugh, alright? Give this place the laugh. Wait. Zombie worker. I'm ju curious if I can, like, sell to these. So this female corpse is dressed in a heavy burlap shirt, covered with food and wine stains. Her lips have been stitched close on her arms and legs are wrapped in several layers of bandages. The bandages seem to have been soaked in preservatives to keep the corpse fresh. As a result, the corpse's rotting odour has been replaced with an equally repulsive vinegar smell. Mmm, nice. Doing anything later? Continues to stare at you. Alright then, great talking to you. Farewell. You turn away, you notice Mort staring at you. Eh? Eh? What is it? Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you see the way that cadaverous beauty was staring at me? Mort's teeth chatter as if in, ante as if in anticipation. She was looking for some lucky cutter to thaw her coffin. Please don't start this again. Mort ignores you and becomes thoughtful. I don't really mind the attention, actually. It's just that I feel uh, I like to be seen as something more than just a skull, you know? I have feelings that go beyond my base animal instincts. I want courtship, not some Fortnite fling around the mausoleum. <laughs> what you are a skull, nobody can help but see you as a skull. Accept it. Yeah, well, I may just be a skull, but I've got a big heart. Actually, you don't have one of those. What? You dumped into my life to spit on my, <laughs> my dreams and aspirations? Fine, be that way then. I don't have a heart, but I do have a soul. Well, actually, I'm betting you'd... Ah, oh, forget it. Let's go. <laughs> I love the dialogue these two have. It's the best. Is there anyone near here I can actually, like, sell shit to? I just want to sell shit to everybody. So you've got Dustman, Dustman. Emmerich. Oh, okay, so that's who that is. These gates are made of a featureless black metal. There doesn't appear to be any way to open them. Same for that one, too. Okay. I mean, there are... Ah, oh, Naroch. Dude, can't remember his name. Or how I said his name. The slow seagull day it has. Alright, right, back to where I... Or oh, whence I came from. No, I need to rest. It's so bad. Every time I get into a fight, it just... I get owned. All right. I rested for an entire day. Bloody hellfire. All right. Who was it that made the contract? Beebody ho da ho. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh yeah, Gravesend. Hmm. Okay. I mean, that's another quest I'll do. I want to finish the one with the dogs. Like, the fact I haven't is kind of annoying. You would think it wouldn't be so bloody difficult. Hive Thug. I mean, it's not exactly difficult. It's, I'm looking for a person, but I can't find the fucker. Which is what's making it so difficult. Who's this guy, anyway? Mourns for trees. I guess he doesn't like trees getting cut down. You see a tired-looking, sorrowful old man who is gazing at the ash-dead tree in front of him. He is mumbling to himself and tapping his chin, as if trying to figure something out. Occasionally, he shakes his head sadly. Greetings. He seems momentarily startled as you interrupt his train of thought. He speaks in a calm, unhurried tone, but one full of sadness. Oh, greetings to you too, friend. How's this day find you? Finds me well. He smiles, but sorrow still lies in his eyes. That's good, friend. Hope your good fortune continues. He seems about to turn back to the trees. And how's this day find you? He shrugs slightly and proffers a bit of a smile. Fortune finds me well, though I'm saddened just the same. Why is that? He pats the tree beside him. It's the trees here, in the hive. They're dying, friend, and no one cares. Seeing the look on your face, he holds his hands up, as if to silence you for a moment. It may not matter to some, but it's important to me. 
I feel it's a shame to see the last tatters of life and beauty in this ward left, uncared for, to die. Can you understand that, friend? Yes, you're right. It's a sad thing. He seems surprised and blurts out, Really? Oh, I mean, wonderful. Perhaps you would... He pauses and seems suddenly suspicious. He recomposes himself, speaking in his usual slow manner. In any case, that's good. I suppose you have some questions for me now. Yes, I, uh, had some questions. He nods, I await your questions. Who are you? I'm called Mons for Trees by the people here, friend. Why is that? He pats the tree beside- Oh, right, yeah. Yes, you're right, it's a sad thing. So, I had some questions. What are you doing here? I'm wasting time, if anything- If anything, friend. He sighs miserably. What do you mean? It's a long story, not something the casual passerby would want to stand around for. I'm sure. Let's just say that any effort I've made to rouse the people here to action have been ignored. What is it you- you would wanted the people to do. I wanted them to, to, he seems exasperated, frustrated at his loss for words, to care. Is that so much, friend? He looks at you in earnest. Care about what? Okay, about the tree. So, right. What can you tell me about? Why are all the trees dying? Just look at your surroundings, friend. Can you imagine anything having an easy life here? And besides the wretched conditions, the Dabas rarely come out, of, come out to this part of Sigil. Dabas? You know, Davis, surely you've seen them. They're the ladies' servants. They care for the city, some parts of it more than others, of course. He looks sadly at the tree beside him. The lady? The lady of pain, friend, the mistress of Sigil. He stops speaking suddenly, making a semicircle sign over his chest. He leans close to whisper. It does no one good to speak of the lady. No, only that she alone controls the city, whether it appears that way at times or not. Speak of her no more. Very well. Why don't the Davis come here often? The hive's a dangerous place, but that's not it. The Dabbers have the lady watching over them, and no one's foolish enough to tangle with her friend. I suppose it's really all on account of Fell. Dabbers? Eh, uh, not Dabbers. Oh my god, the lady. Very well. Who is Fell? He's a tattooist. Fell, he's, uh, well, friend, I'll just say he's the only Dabbers that doesn't serve the lady. I don't know the whole dark of it, as they say, but he's shunned by his fellows and lives here, alone in the hive. He runs a tattoo parlor, but most of Sigil is wary of the place. Tell me about this tattoo parlor. Fell's parlor is the only building... Oh, it's only a few buildings east of here. It's marked with his personal symbol, a white oval pierced by a lightning bolt. Never been there myself, friend, but as I understand it, he's able to turn images from his speech, you know, that was speaking... Uh, speaking images, yes. Rebuses? Yes, go on. He nods, so he's somehow able to turn images from his speech into tattoos. They're not just ordinary inkings, inkings either, I'm told there's magic about them. They're more than just in their ma making. I don't know much else about it though. So what about the places there to be wary of? Well friends, since he's, he turned from the lady, many people think it's just a matter of time before her shadow falls on him. No one wants to be about when and if that happens, I'm sure. You don't have any idea of how he came to be shunned? Like I said friend, I'm not too sure. I've only heard vague rumours about him being on the wrong side of the issue when some power decided to butt heads with the lady. You could always try to ask him, friend. I'm told he's friendly enough, if not a little odd. Uh, okay, so some power? A deity, friend. A god? Normally the lady had no or has no problems with the likes of them, as she keeps their lot out of sigil entirely. His name was... Ausgar. But I don't know much else about the affair. His name was? The man nods gravely, as I understand that the lady destroyed him. I wouldn't forget that, if you were to ever consider messing about with her or her servants. Oh, I had other questions, I think. I'm looking for a man named Farod. Or, no, what can you tell me about this place? So where's Sigil has to offer, friend? Not much else to say about it, he smiles sadly. Why are you here, then? I'm wasting time, if anything, friend. Okay, other questions? Shy, I pressed the wrong button. I had questions. What about this place? What if I was looking for work? In the hive, unless you're a thief, I doubt you'll find any. You could always gather corpses and haul them to the mortuary gates. If you're that desperate, I hear the dustmen pay a pittance for them there. In an effort to keep the hive's streets and alleyways from becoming even more foul. Where could I go to enjoy myself? My well, friend, it takes a certain sort to find anything of amusement in a place like this. I'd look for entertainment in another ward, if I were you. Safer. What's dangerous? Here, yeah, everything, friend. Everyone, everything. Well, maybe not me. Huh. Other questions? A uh, man named Farad. Sorry friend, when I first came here I spoke to many people, but I don't remember anyone by that name. And number six. Looking for a journal I've lost. Can't recall seeing him, seeing one anywhere. Where do you last remember having it? Not sure I had some other questions. Couldn't say farewell. Boom! Wait, so where's this? 
That's not a building. Oh, okay. Still can't believe I don't know where the other dog is. Hey, what the heck? This is like a random ass building. What? Wait, it's a painted door? What you first took to be a door in this archway is actually a painting. Oh, okay. The artist has made use of the shadows of the overhanging arch and some sort of texturing effects to give the door the illusion of substance. Examine the door. Other than the skill of the artist, there is nothing remarkable about the painting. The door has been painting on a rough stone wall. You can feel the stone and mortar beneath the painted wooden uh, texture. Leave the door alone. Oh, so that doesn't actually lead anywhere. Oh, painted... it does say painted door. To the tenement of thugs. Well, So much for that. Hmm. So you still just got the hi hive thug. If I speak to the harlot, does she say anything? Oh dear. Greetings. Oh. Oh wait, yeah. <laughs> I keep forgetting I should read these. Wait, is this different? You see a 